It's about 6.45 in the morning. I uh, offered last night to do, to start the fire. Started getting the fire going. Did I, do, did I make an all right fire or? Yeah, it's good to me. It's yeah, it was all right? It's burning, so yeah. It's burning? Good, it's burning, that's all that matters. Out of 10, how would you rate this fire? Seven or an eight, maybe. Seven or an eight, I'll, I'll take it. Official review of the hoe cake taco, as I'm gonna call it, because I got ham and apples in it. It's really good. I'm here with Chip, another one of the members of the First Virginia. I want to know more about your musket, how it operates. So, could you, would you mind walking me through that? Absolutely. So, this is a Brown Bess musket. It's a reproduction of the uh, typical British musket of the period. It's a flintlock musket. A flintlock musket means it has a piece of flint here. It has a piece of steel here. Mm -hmm. It has a little pan where I'm going to put some gunpowder when I'm going to fire it later in battle. When I load this musket, I will reach into my cartridge box. I will pull out a prepared cartridge. This cartridge is a blank cartridge, meaning it just has gunpowder in it. If this were a live round, it would have a ball in the bottom, down in here in the bottom. To load and fire my musket as a musket man in the infantry, uh, I would reach into my cartridge, pull out a cartridge, bite off the cartridge, pour a little powder into this pan, and I would just fill that pan a little bit. Okay. Then I would shut the pan. Yep. Then I would turn the musket around. I'd put the rest of the powder down the barrel. And if I were firing at the British, I would then drop the ball, still in the paper, all the way down the barrel. I would have to pull out my rammer and ram the paper and the ball all the way down so it sat right on top of the gunpowder. When I am ready to fire, I'm going to be given the, the order to make ready, which will bring me to this position. I will cock the musket. I will wait for the order to take aim, which will be like this. And when I pull the trigger, the flint is going to strike the steel, create sparks that drop into the pan. The pan will ignite and hopefully send enough flame through the touch hole into the barrel to ignite the main charge of powder. Uh, powder. <coughs> That powder will then propel the ball down the barrel and hopefully at the British. American soldiers who I was with, I was with them earlier in the woods. This is not. I'm right in the heat of the heart of the battle, and I think they're about to. This is nuts. This is insane. This is crazy. All right, we're making a move. The Americans are moving in on the Brits. wanted to say goodbye to everybody and they're all as you can see they are currently packing up yeah this is the, the downside of the job the hobby yeah it's a uh, I, I, I got a, I'm not gonna lie I got kind of attached to this place folks don't understand the subject matter come on out take a look at us or anyone else who does a period work and uh, we'll uh, engage you and answer your questions and uh, whatever else you would like
But that wraps up Revolutionary War weekend. It was great to see all of the reenactors show up and just, you know, literally, I felt like I was in a little, in a real living colonial community. The people I stayed with at the camp, they were so nice. Chip and Marshall, after speaking to them and learning more about why they do this, people who are on the outside in general, they definitely think it's different. And you know what? These are really, they're like totally down to earth people. This is something they like to do in their free time because it's outdoors, it's interactive, uh, it's an excuse to be with family and other people who are really into history. And it was really cool to see that. I cannot wait for next year. And uh, I've already got a few ideas of what I'm gonna do. And I'm excited to uh, start building up to that. So, all right, I'll see you guys for our next, for ne our next episode. And thanks again for tuning in.